Hi everyone, I'm Finney Baldtano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a classic review of Emperors in the Nightside Eclipse. Famed Norwegian black metal band Emperor, this is their big breakout album released in 1994. A landmark record for black metal for a handful of different reasons. It is one of the records that helped evolve the genre past its very obvious heavy metal and thrash metal influences, for one, 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 which were still very apparent in the music of black metal originators, such as Bathory and Hellhammer, as well as Early Mayhem and Venom. And this LP actually arrives after some of black metal's most notorious albums of the 90s, like Dark Thrones, Ablaze in the Unknown Sky, Burzum's self-titled record, and Immortal's diabolical full moon mysticism. This band would actually return to a more heavy metal and melodic sound in the late 90s. So at this point in black metal's timeline, you have a lot of recordings that are very rough, they're very lo-fi, they're very noisy, chaotic. You're getting these brittle guitars, these wretched, shrill, growled vocals. Generally, a lot of this, it was music that was simultaneously loud and attention-grabbing, but also was kind of saying, get out of here, get out, ah, stay away, stay away. Often, music fans who watch my show will approach me and say, hey man, like, what's some easy black metal to get into. I've heard a lot of black metal and it's just really tough and it's really noisy, like, you know, give me, give me like a bit of a, a, a softball over here. Historically, black metal has not really been that inviting and welcoming of a genre. It's only been until recently where a lot of American acts have taken on the sound and popularized it in North America that a lot of people have been kind of uh, taking to it. The sound is supposed to be challenging. It's supposed to be discordant. That's part of the reason why black metal had such an insular community throughout much of the 90s. That and some of the extremist views and acts of violence that some particular artists were notorious for. Plus, black metal just flows and grooves differently from other styles of metal. It's not quite as visceral. It's more dramatic and theatrical and overstated. It's supposed to be the soundtrack to you freezing to death in a monstrous blizzard or falling down a pit into hell. But I will say... This Emperor album over here, for black metal albums released in the first half of the 90s, this one is relatively easy to get into. It's kind of accessible. In comparison with other black metal recordings, it's not lo-fi, it's not super noisy, it's not super difficult to get into the instrumentation and sort of decipher what's going on. This record brings a lot of the bass elements of Norwegian black metal, but just with a higher fidelity recording. Not only that, but there are more pronounced melodies and harmonies with very symphonic keyboards being thrown into the mix. They're kind of working with this patch that's very frosty, it's icy, it's smooth, it sounds like maybe a chorus of dark angels or a string section or maybe some kind of devilish organ. And it really elevates the black metal guitars and drums in the mix. So even though the recording here is clearer, there's still a level of mystery to what Emperor is doing. It's still shrouded, but it's not shrouded in noise or just a rough recording. It's shrouded instead in reverb, which causes all the instrumentation to kind of melt together into this wall of sound, which creates a pretty atmospheric experience, which I think a lot of American black metal fans will get into, considering how atmospheric black metal is sort of like the predominant style of North American black metal. Now, I don't want to totally paint black metal as this one-dimensional music community or artistic style. There were plenty of artists uh, immediately right after Emperor that would go on to experiment a lot with the genre. Bands like Ulver and even the band Dimu Borgir was doing similarly symphonic black metal music around the same time that this album was released. But Emperor's statement on this record, I would say, is particularly huge. The whirlwind of sound the band presents on this record is so vivid, I just get sucked right into it. I'm enveloped in it. It's like an eye of a tornado that is just 
squeezing in on me as I listen to the album more and more, sort of like a boa constrictor just tightening around a little animal's crumpled up body. And the band is pretty consistent in this sound and in this intensity throughout the entire record. They're not really kind of baiting you with pretty sounds and kind of pulling you in with maybe a few moments where there are some easy to listen to melodies or anything like that. The band just kicks off just kicking your ass from the beginning of this record to the end. It's a very physical recording. I would say very physical for black metal and, and dramatic too. Now across this record, even though there is a similar vibe on a lot of these tracks, there are still highlights. Again, I have to praise the synthesizers, the keys on this record. The very nimble and dynamic melodies they provide over the guitars and the drums add a lot to this record. They give this very savage genre of metal music a bit of uh, refinement. And the vocals at times can kind of make my skin crawl or maybe they sound a little creepy like on the burning shadows of silence here we have a, a bit of a recurring theme on the record where we have these very deep ominous spoken word vocals that kind of echo out into the wall of sound that's being created by the guitars and the drums. We also have Into the Infinity of Thoughts where the singing gets absolutely animalistic, especially at the five minute mark where uh, essentially the vocals devolve into something that doesn't even feel uh, like in control of itself. It just kind of just goes ooh, ah, ooh, ah, yeah. And I'm just uh, amazed at just how many intricacies I find in this record as I listen to it more and more and more, especially in the drums, because a lot of the fills that kind of carry the songs from one bar to the next are killer. One thing I want to highlight a little bit more is how dramatic this record is, how theatrical this record is, how big it sounds, how it sounds kind of otherworldly in a way. I think black metal consistently is metal's most dramatic and theatrical genre. The face paint, the get-ups, the weaponry. It's all about building this fantastical, dangerous, violent, blasphemous image. It's no wonder that loads of black metal bands are heavily inspired by fantasy book series like The Lord of the Rings. The highlights on this record continue like on the track Cosmic Keys where the song opens up with some of the heaviest and just most head smashing riffs on the entire record. It's worth noting that a lot of the song structures on this record are pretty progressive as the band transitions from one moment to another across these six or eight minute track lengths. Towards the Pantheon has this nice little soft opener and then it all of a sudden explodes into this flurry of guitars and drums. I feel like I'm witnessing a dark mass of some sort. And during the high points of the keyboard melodies on Majesty in the Night Sky, the guitars and the drums just sync up and go super just balls to the wall fast. That's a very technical term and the bass guitar on this track, it, sadly it's not that audible on a lot of the other songs, but for whatever reason here, it's weirdly dissonant and I kind of like it. It adds a weird harmonic character to the track that no other song on here has. The album finishes off with an incredible, stunning track that is short, but <laughs> it is so fast, it's so to the point, and not only is it one of the most hellish moments on the record, it's also one of the most harmonious and I think, uh, in a way, pleasant to listen to, especially since it has these chorus vocals sort of hanging in the wall of sound that are very clean and they sound kind of pretty, but still in another breath, the music does sound very devilish, very ritualistic, especially when you get down to the lyrics uh, where, where it seems like the band is singing directly to Satan or some other kind of god antagonist. And the track opens up with these fantastically fast layered guitar harmonies that, that sound wonderful. It's kind of hard to pick out a lot of these intricacies as you're listening to the album for your first time, your second time. It's that wall of sound that you've really got to kind of dig past and listen through. I mean, you're sucked in by it and you're, you're, you're just encased in it. And that's kind of an enjoyable feeling in and of itself. But beyond that, there's a lot of little musical nuggets and a lot of little interesting performance nuggets, especially with those drum fills, especially with how the guitars lock in with the drums so tightly that are worth kind of lapping up as you kind of acclimate yourself to the very hellish soundscape that this album delivers. I don't really have anything else to say about this really fantastic black metal record. It's a great record, and I hope you check it out. I hope you give it a shot, and uh, you're the best.
Transition. I hope you have a good day. You're the best. Buzz, 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 buzz